you don't refer to yourself as a pastor's wife. No. And where there is smoke, <laughs> there, there is, is fire. fire. Are you a troublemaker? What do you think it is that the church people don't really like about you? What are they criticizing? Oh, what are they fighting nah, you It's jealousy. On? Why use <clears throat> social media as a platform and the mm. need to expose them? I read the post huh? and I was like, Nandi. <laughs> I'm, I'm that girl that would even, if I needed to get to you and the only way I could kill you is in public, I will come wearing a bomb, we'll go down together. Yo. Oh. Okay, so they also wanted you to quit your job. They wanted me to quit my job, but are you going to pay me? So I was like... At the expense of your husband's reputation? And it's jealousy. I mean, it church people are very evil. Hello there, hola, and welcome to yet another episode of I've Been Through The Most podcast right here on St. Twins TV. Whether you're listening on Spotify, on Podcast Africa, on Apple Podcast, or watching on YouTube, we welcome you with open hearts. Jeez, I had to remember all these platforms. Jeez, I was about to say, <laughs> well done, girl, because you usually say, there's usually a pause in between I mean, because there she was. has to think. There was, there was but right? I mean, we love all the platforms. Please make sure that you interact with us. Let us know where you're watching or listening from. Yes, we are on social media as well. TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. Make sure you follow us on all those different platforms so that you keep updated on the latest podcast. Yeah. Today, I'm personally excited because if you watch Pastor's Wives, you will know that there was a girl who is who who is what she thinks she is. She's the queen, honey. You better recognize we've got Nandi in the building. Welcome. Let me fix it. Queen Nandi. Thank you. It's Queen Nandi to you. <laughs> Take me back to Pastor's Wives. Right. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for having me here. Oh, you guys make me want to have twin girls. <laughs> Don't I'll do it. it. You Don't already have very handsome twin yes, boys. Yes, I have handsome twin boys. I think girls will be nice there. Oh. Nandi, you are done. Says who? You exactly. are done. The Lord you, will say I'm done. Are you her womb? <laughs> yes, okay. thank you. Okay, okay. okay. I, I apologize. Can say I'm done. I apologize. I repent. Wow. But for those who did yes. not watch Pastor's Wives mm -hmm. and um, they don't know who Nandi is, I don't know which rock they've been under, can you please introduce yourself? Well, um... My name is Nandi Pamlombi. It's Queen Nandi to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, geez, it's, it's a tough question. Yeah. I hate that question when I'm asked, tell people who are you. It's like, that's when I understand why Jesus said I am who I am. Come on. <laughs> yeah, like I understand. You wear so many hats. Yeah. Which one do you focus on? Do I speak to you about Nandi, the wife or the daughter or the... Aunt all of it. it. The mom. The mom. You summarize uh, all of it. Yeah, but so, so what I'm saying is, for me, it just becomes too much if I have to say, ah, I'm this and this. Um, I'm a daughter of the Most High King. Come on. That's girl. why I'm queen. Yes. I'm made in the image of a king, darling. Yes. So, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> it's very good to have you. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, for me, what really influenced us having you on the show is that, of course, you, you're in the media for different reasons. You're in the media because you're a reality star. But thereafter, so many things yeah. followed up, you know? No, actually. So, <laughs> so she means... <laughs> Point you, of correction. You, you, before you are, I was a reality star, I'm yes. an actress. Before oh. the whole process, once I've been on productions, yes... Darling, I have a gift. We, we don't I, know. I have a gift of shape shifting. You would watch me and you wouldn't even know you're watching me. Ooh, <laughs> what? I had no idea you're an actress. You. Yeah. I That's know you crazy. are a beauty pageant. But oh, you yes, see, there's that too. You see, Jeez. we asked her to introduce herself exactly. and then she didn't. <laughs> now she's busy correcting everything that we are saying. And I'm like... But well, anyway, that's not why we're here. Anyway. So let's go to church, guys, because we have... You don't refer to yourself as a pastor's wife. No. You refer yourself to... So why you like, no, are there levels to this thing? Yeah, no, there's levels, babes. We were it, called out. Innocent <laughs> needs to... Honestly, in this show, Sissy, you're going to have to take the back seats, right? Okay. So that I'm, I'm going to take over because... Thanks. You, you, obviously, you guys were on a reality yeah. show together, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And then she knows... You know, as a part of you that I, yeah. I obviously don't know. And I have so many questions and, you know, and I feel like, you know, it's going to be nice. I'm not going to yeah. be nice. <laughs> I am <laughs> joking. <laughs> of course. 
<laughs> of course I'm going to be nice. But I mean, she mentioned that you are in the media for a lot of things. But you literally trend a lot, right? There's like, n- when you hear Nandi, you know, like something. <laughs> Drama. Up. There is smoke and where there is smoke, <laughs> there, there is, is fire. fire. Are you a troublemaker? No, I am not. So this is the philosophy I live by. Yeah. So I do no harm to people. I will never come at you and say, um, you know what, I want to harm Umilio. You know, I, I don't do that. Mm. But at the same token, I receive no harm. You it, refuse it simple, I, to no, receive. I, mm. As much as I will not harm you, I will also not take it. So that's how the drama comes about. So mm. people think uh, we, can, we can bully her. I'm like, nope, I won't bully you, but mm. I will not take it from you either. Okay. It's, it's as simple as that. Yeah. And um, yeah, generally speaking, so there's this quote I love by John Wesley, who's one of the founders of the Methodist Church, or at least whose ideology the Methodist Church is built up on. He says, do no harm to others. And I just take it a little further. Do no harm, but accept no harm. Because mm-hmm. sometimes people, um, I think, the reason we have people bullying others or hurting each other one way or another, they accepted mm. others bullying. Yeah. Hurt people hurt others. So you allowed someone to hurt you and now you're gonna go around hurting others because that's what was done to you. You accepted it and you accept everyone else to accept I'm like, nah, not this chick. <laughs> sure, yeah. And so, <laughs> so this chick is Yo. is a Sure, I, I don't even know how to say it because she's going to, you know. Uh, so you, you're not a, you, you don't want to be called a pastor's wife. You're not a bishop's wife. You're a minister's wife. You're yeah. minister's wife. Minister's wife. So when you, so the way you refer to it is like pastor's wives are lower, lower. than <laughs> minister's wives. So Do you want to explain that right now? <laughs> no, please Although, go for it. Feel free. No, honestly. Real uh, reality is they're all the same. They're all doing the same thing. Different denominations, mm-hmm. different churches. But um, I think for me, it's the hopes Methodist ministers go through. I'm like, a child, you cannot be going around saying they are the same as everyone. Do you know these people literally go through training for seven years, like a doctor. Four years of school, proper mm-hmm. like um, tertiary. And then after that, it's practicals like a doctor would. And I'm like, yes, yeah, see. And then they still go through probation. There's there's so many hoops sure. they jump. Even so before these are the, they accepted are the, are the, are the, are the ministers. The Methodist ministers. Mm-hmm. So even before they accepted, like, they must go explain their calling to someone. Like, um, mm, we think you called or not called. I mean, my husband was turned back, I think, when he was 19. Because he's always been a church boy, always been called. And... So they go through so much just okay. to get into the system. Yeah, okay. So you, you, then, you want them to have the can, title can, can to be given respect? some respect. Can you yes. give them some respect? Okay, I've These got people have been through the most just to wear that collar. <laughs> but you've put okay. them through the most too. Uban. You, the church. How so? <laughs> no, I, I have not put the Methodist church through anything. Um, I think... Well, what seems to be starting now, it's an mm. old thing. Is it, it? It's, I think for as long as I've been married to a minister, a Methodist minister, yeah. I've, I've always been <clears throat> under scrutiny or criticized for my personal life, mm-hmm. which is nobody's business but mine, hence it's personal. Mm-hmm. So I remember when we were at um, seminary, so this is the school we... Okay. The ministers are trained. And Mina, I if I go we go out, my husband and I, and there's a swimming pool, I'm gonna wear my bikini and I'm gonna be out there, you know. And like, whose wife is this? Who's this minister? <laughs> like sure. you know, okay. so so it's always That's how like, you started standing it, out, like yeah, this girl so, is not so following like, the rules. She she's not and, and what are the rules? So what am I supposed to swim with with a leotard or something? Or a whole cat but, suit. So there's no <laughs> protocols in place there for was, a minister's wife. For that matter, there isn't even a platform where they say, okay, now you're marrying a minister. Mm-hmm. These are the do's and don'ts. Yeah. There isn't such a platform. However, they just sit and just watch with red pens. So, I mean, this was, I think I was 
2024 when he candidated to be a minister. Mm -hmm. So this is like, actually, no, even younger. So now you're under the scrutiny. Everyone's like, no, if someone has an opinion, why is she wearing a bikini? Why is it on, on Facebook? Yeah, yeah but mm -hmm. in I'm posting on Facebook. Why can't I? Like any 20-something-year-old, go on their social media. Look for a 23, 24, 25. Mm. They're doing that. And these are congregants' children. All right? But and they're they, not ministers' wives. Okay, so they're not ministers' wives. But you're okay to go and tell another 20-something-year-old while sitting with a 20-something-year-old in your house. You tell them, no, you must wear your skirt to the ankles. You, must, you mustn't um, post your pics of bikinis, whatever, on social media. But mm -hmm. your daughters are. And guess what? These men that we married to, they are actually... They're real men. They're human beings. <laughs> they're men. They are men. Yeah. They are on Before social they media. Before they are ministers. <laughs> like, honey, <laughs> they are men. He's going to go on social media. He's going to see your daughter as a congregant. She's up there with her booty and cleavage and showing it all. She can because... It's, I mean, she's young, she's got the body for it, and she's living her life, you mm -hmm. know. And then the next thing, you have your congregants fighting over Umfundis who's married. Like, no, he, he, he's dating my daughter and the other one. Like, the ministers are dating Amahamente, like the congregants. Mm. And it's normal. And these are married men. These are married men. And for mm. me, it's like, I'm not saying if he, a man, if he wants to cheat, he's going to cheat. You can wear your bikini, you can do whatever, do handstands, whatever. If he wants to, he will. So here's my thing. My philosophy was, look, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to live my truth. Whether he stays or leaves, at least I'm not going to be sitting somewhere having lost myself. Don't mm -hmm. even recognize who I am, even if I look in the mirror. At least if he leaves, I'm like, okay, I still got me. I had me before him. Mm. I got me during him. I got me after him. But you do <laughs> realize that you were more of an unconventional Mamfundisi. Absolutely. You know, you're different. You do yeah. things as you want to do them. And maybe just to bring context to the Methodist church, mm -hmm. you know, they're very strict in terms of appearance and wearing the uniform mm -hmm. in a certain way. And I know with you, there's also been issues around that. You would have maybe you, like your tongue ring or your nose ring yeah. with the uniform and you're not allowed to wear it in that way. You, I stand to be corrected. So so here's the thing. The Methodist Church um, prides itself in method. Okay? And all the methods that the Methodist Church prides itself in are in black and white. There's a laws and discipline, or now it's a book of order because it's changed the name. Laws and discipline or book of order. Mm -hmm. But my point is that it's in black and white. And I have never broken a law in the Methodist Church. Never. So now it comes to people's um, preferences. Mm. So I'm going to say, um, uh, no, you know, I don't like the color of your nails. Uh, it's too bright for the uniform. But that's my preference. You've got nails. Are we talking about a matter of, no, you shouldn't have nails with Zaparo or the color? And then if it's a color thing, then let's make it a rule that you cannot wear red nails for example. You understand what I'm saying? So in terms of the rules, you've yes, always I've followed never, the rules. I've always. I mean, at some point, I, I tried to be a good mom from this because, you know, there was so much backlash. Yeah. I was mm. like trying to be a good girl. I wore, you know, the um, mom from this who wears a cape. The, yeah. the, how you differentiate a normal mewa sabaro from a mom from this is the cape. Okay. I had this cape that Wokogo Wo, Wo used to wear, like it had one button here. And other pastors, or minister's wife would laugh at me. And be like, mm. that is so outdated, why you still wear that? Yeah. That that was me trying to, okay, this is how it's done. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it never worked, it was like one thing or another. And that's when I was so, like, you know what, mm, I'm never going to win. Yeah, so w what do you think it is that the church people don't, really like about you? What are they criticizing? Oh, what are they fighting nah, you It's jealousy. On? That is it. Human, like black people are just jealous beings because, I mean, it got to a point where they were like, no, she doesn't fit in the black context. Let's take her to a white context. So for me, when did it become about me? I'm not the one who said I was cold. The question should be, 
does Rev Mlombi fit in this context? Is he doing mm. his job? Is he, do you have any issues but with him? But anything that you do because you're the wife affects him. And I think that that's another subject that I want mm. to touch on is that don't you feel like with everything that you've done or said in the public or social mm. media has affected his position as a minister in the church? Mm. Like, um, you know, maybe like before writing a post on Facebook, you're not like, is this going to get him fired? Is it not? Whether it's true or yeah, not, because yeah. I know you're going to beg yeah. to define that this is my truth. This is what's happening. No, actually, I agree with you. So how, you know, so how do you navigate around So that? again, remember, it, it, it also goes back to, so here's a one thing that I've also learned, you know, trying to navigate this thing in ministry. It's like, okay, it's not his thing. It's our thing. Mm. You know, we are one. Mm. So I've tried to be the mom fundisi that I thought is what people wanted. Mm. Like I made an example with the cape. I would wear the olden yeah. days. So, you know, and it didn't work. Um, I, geez, I mean, even my uniform, I see there's a fashion now. They'll have um, covered buttons, you know, they make them fancy to look the like the blouse. And, yeah. You know, they, mm. they're modernizing it. I would still keep to the plastic ones. The 50 cents, I, I call them the 50 cent buttons because mm. back then they used to be 50 cents per button. And I would stick to those. My blouse wouldn't have darts because it's like, no, you're making it fancy. It's not supposed to. I tried and I just don't win. And that's when I realized it doesn't matter what I do. And people have decided that they don't like you for whatever reason they don't like you for. They just don't like you. And there's nothing you can do about it. And so I was going to do myself a favor and be myself, live my truth. The rest will just adjust. But at, at at the expense of your husband's reputation? Again, that's debatable. That's debatable. Like with my post about the Methodist Church from 2022 September, I remember, mm. when they decided to sideline him because of my posts and my lifestyle, blah, mm. blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay. So let's all agree, I'm the worst mom fundis who has ever walked planet Earth. Like, no one has ever seen such, right? Now let's look into the saints. The fundisi and their wives that are within the Methodist Church. This is what they're doing. The males, they're sleeping with each other. They're married to women. Their wives will find them in bed with each other. It's crazy. So, <laughs> am I that bad? Sure. Am I really the worst? Imagine coming back from a church event. Okay, you're going to a church event and then you happen to make a U-turn, you forgot whatever. And then boom, you find your husband and his colleague in bed. Another man. Yeah. So am I really mm. that bad? Because I, you know, I always say, and the reason I shared those things um, on Facebook, like people thought, oh, she's destroying the church. I wasn't destroying the church. I was just saying, Or okay, fighting back. Because we thought, is, is Nandi fighting back? Is she upset at no, something? No, it's like, if you say I'm the worst, okay. So my worst is piercings, what? Cursing. Nude photo shoots. Nude photo shoots. Okay, yeah. if that's my worst, sharp. Let's agree, I'm the worst. But let's 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 look at the same. So you taking let's, accountability let's, for I'm your part. A, that, that's my part. And and remember, <laughs> remember also my part. It, that's also your opinion that it's wrong. It's also your opinion that um it's it's evil and whatever you want to call it that I'm wrong. It's your opinion, because I would have never done it if it was wrong. Or if I felt, oh my goodness, this is an abomination, I wouldn't have. Um, so let's let's look at the saints of the Methodist Church. They're sleeping with each other. You've got um, you've got a a lesbian in the closet as the head of the church. So you know this so because this you are in in leadership in the church. So you know. No, this is known by everyone. Huh? Yeah. Sure. It, 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 everybody knows. So the difference between me and them is that I I'm not lying or hiding anything. I am who I am. I do what I want. If you see it, you don't see it. I don't want you catching me doing whatever, having a glass of wine and then be like, ha, I got something on her. No, you have nothing on me, honey. I will do it in your face because I'm doing it for me. And if I'm sinning, it's my sin that I'm going to face the Lord one day and be like, okay. You know? So 
I guess my my sin is not sinning in privacy. Like no one should catch you. No one. But I'm like, what am I doing wrong? Why use <clears throat> social media as a platform and the mm. need to expose them in order to not cover yourself, but to mm. say, if you know, like you're saying, Guti, if I'm sinning, then what is this? Yeah. You know, but mm. why why expose them? I wanna mm. understand what was the motivation? Was it hitting back from how they've been treating you? You know, because you there's a lot of files, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of accusations that you made, a lot of ministers th that you exposed, yeah. a lot of things that happened behind the closet um, in, in the Methodist church. Why did you feel the need to do that? And also to call them names as well, because you called them <laughs> names. You went for them. Like, why? I read the post and I was like, Nandi, what happened? Okay, What's so, happening? So that that stemmed from, you know, I think the last straw was when they said, okay, if he still wanted a future in the Methodist church, he needed to divorce me. So I was like, you're coming for my marriage, you're coming for my family, you're coming for my children. Like, Bona, you can do anything, say whatever you want about me. Touch my kids. I will come up, like... I'm, I'm that girl that would even, if I needed to get to you and the only way I could kill you is in public, I will come wearing a bomb, we'll go down together. Yo. So, yeah. So, your husband in all this, I mean, we know your husband and I'm sure a lot of people know <laughs> yeah. your husband mm -hmm. and love him so much. And love him. <laughs> Sweet guy. He is. Man, Man of God. <laughs> <laughs> And then kind. there is Nand. Wow. Okay. So in all, <laughs> like, I mean, you guys are almost opposite. If I can, if I can, if if I was to describe from what we yeah. see, from what we see, right? Mm -hmm. You are like opposites. You are you are like, boom. You know, out there, and it is, and he's like, you know. So in all of this, how is he handling the fact that? Um, you are you going are for his church. Being Nandi and and you are writing all these posts. Mm. Do you discuss it before with him? No. So he sees this post and no. he's like, "These <laughs> are my employers. These people mm. are feeding us. They are housing us. They are doing mm. this." What is the response? What are your conversations like? I remember the first post <laughs> in twenty twenty two September. Was it September, I think so, um, or November. I don't remember. So he comes in the room, he sees this post, he walks in, and he's like, please delete it. I'm like, no. He's like, please delete it. I'm like, no. Thank then I, my parents were there at the moment, at that time. Yeah. And um, he goes and he begs my mom, like, please talk to your daughter. <laughs> she must take this sure. post down. <laughs> so did you take it down? No. Why not? It's still there up till today. And I'm going to keep it. So do you feel, I would, I would don't you feel like that's disrespecting your husband? You know, the funny thing is when I met my husband at 20, um, we were quite, like, I was in his position. Yeah. I was very quiet. Hardly spoke. I, like, actually, I hated talking. Like, you greet me, I would keep quiet because I don't want to talk. And then what Very quiet. To you? And he, on the <laughs> other hand, <laughs> he, on the <laughs> other hand, was probably the most hated guy at the church where we met. Sure. He was opinionated. Yeah. He, was, he, he had a say about anything and everything. He was just that guy that, you know, other guys just did not like, you know. He was that guy. And um, I, I remember I was asking him the other day, I was like, what happened to you? Because we used to be, where I am right now, yes, that used to be you. you swapped roles. Yeah. yeah, we swapped roles. We're like, what happened to you? He's like, I grew up and have responsibilities, so... I can't afford I can't afford to go around pissing people off, you know, which is what you are doing right now. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing it at the wrong time. But sure. um I think that's emotion speaking, you know. I mm. mean, imagine as a man losing a job at 40 and you have no income, you can't take care of your family. So that's emotion speaking and you know, he's being practical. But here's the thing, I never I never woke up and decided, oh, you know what? I want to go and pick a fight with the Methodist people. I had zero. For that matter, by the time they did what they did, what I wasn't did even, they do? I wasn't even going to church. I was like, okay, since you guys are saints, I'm the problem. I'm going to stay at home. 
you saying stay and do your thing. They decided to put my husband off because, because no, of first. You. No, first, it started when we were filming Pastor's Wives, yes. you remember. He didn't come to the reunion. Actually, the last few episodes and the reunion. Wasn't he wasn't in the last season, yeah. yeah. He wasn't. So, no, the first season. Okay. The oh, yeah, then season, he was there. He was there, but then they started having problems and, you know, giving him grief. For being on the show. For being on the show. Okay. You know, first they said um, he was using the church property. So okay. I said, okay, we stopped filming at the at the house. At the yeah. House. Yeah. So context, because the Methodist yeah. church, when you're a minister, yeah, you, you have, do get a house yes, and you get all this. Yes. So obviously, if you're shooting a reality show, you're probably going to shoot at the premises. Exactly. Then That's they said, you don't. Don't. So don't we shoot. Stopped. You stopped. We, okay. We stopped shooting um, at the house. And then it was like, no, but Nandi should get out of the show because she wouldn't be in the show if if she wasn't married to you. So that's... Okay, so, so they also wanted you to quit your job. They wanted me to quit my job, but are you going to pay me? I I mean, are they, you going to employ me, actually? Are you going to mm, give me a full-time job mm. where you're going to pay me? So I was like... Yo. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I will do you it. You will continue, my, yes. Myself and my kids, we're going to do this. Yeah, you know, it was the <laughs> issue how you were handling yourself on the show, because for me, mm -hmm. she's working. She, she, you, you understand? Yeah. What was the problem with you being on the show? Again, Umona, remember this guy. If he's on TV, he's like right now. He's he's, he's one of those pastors that are not may not be for the same reason all um, clergy yeah. men are known for. But the reality is, he's going to be on TV. He's exposed now. People are like, oh, who's this pastor? Come do our weddings blah 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 and it's jealousy i mean it, church people are very evil but were you not weighing the options in that let's say you lose the pastor's okay. uh pastor's wife show right yeah. but your husband gets to keep the job as a minister you get to keep your house you okay. get to keep the income for a long term so mm -hmm. when you're weighing the risk involved I was it, it like, worth it for I get it. That's it why it? Yeah. I said he must stop filming. Like, he doesn't have to be part of it. But they wanted you to stop. Who am I in the Methodist Church? You are the minister's wife. No, I'll tell you who I am in the Methodist Church. I'm a congregant. And they will always, congregants will always remind you. They will tell you, Ubizo uh, is not an STD. Mm. You understand? They will tell you it's not sexually transmitted. Yeah. So don't think, don't come tell us what to do you are not the minister he is wena do you understand so when i exercise my rights as a congregant because i'm like treat me the same way you treat other congregants because you will happily remind me when it suits you that i'm not called so you were definitely then reminded because then they asked you to they kicked you out of your own house because right? i saw a post exactly. on social media um, and you said literally they're kicking. You have five kids. Is it five or six? How many six, kids? Girl, six. Have six. Six. Girl, you have kids. kids really yes, kids. honey. Is it six? Six. Wow. And they kicked yeah. you out of the house. Yeah. yeah. Your so, husband got fired from the church. Remember the work and 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 accommodation. It's it's one together. Thing. It's yeah. one thing. So if you are at this church, whatever church, let's say you in Midrand. Obviously, there's a house that belongs to the church that's close to the church where they've placed you. Okay. It. So, obviously, you're going to stay there and work there. So, obviously, if they kick you out of the work, you, the house as well. It belongs to them, yes. Yeah, so you, you leave. And I was like, okay, so you're kicking him out of a job. Okay, he's... What do they call it? Yeah, but for me, it, it is what it is. It's yeah. a job. You're kicking him out of his job and obviously expect him to leave the house. How is where must he go rent? Or you know very well you don't pay him enough to actually buy a house. First and foremost, there's no Methodist minister unless he's got criminal activities that gets paid enough to buy a house, which is why they accommodate him. So they create this co this this ridiculous codependency where these men are actually inca incapable of doing anything. You've got this man staying in this house that you can chuck him out of any time. And obviously you don't pay him enough to even get a bond or even rent. So you chuck him out of a job, you expect him to go where with six kids? So you refuse to leave? 
I refuse. I still happily stay there. It's the second year now, and I am there. I've put my kids back to their old schools. Fair enough, they've rocked the boat, but I'm going to give my children some stability as long as I can. And one of that is keeping them at the schools is where they were at. Mm. And, you know, they still get to keep their friends that they've made over the years. And, yeah, at least that I can do. So for me, it's like the same, but, but, but this same church that's currently accommodating you mm -hmm. is the very same church that you are trashing on social media. So that I'm like, but you actually need these people. So I why are you, but you're staying in no, their no, no. house. Here's, here's the messed up part about the system of, of the Methodist church. I'm not going to speak for other churches. I almost said mainline churches, but yeah. I thought, okay, let's, let's take that back. Mm. Here's the messed up thing. You treat someone as if they need you. Does, do we really need them? No. They've been using him as a cash cow. I mean, every month that man must get on the pulpit and suck money out of those people. <laughs> <laughs> he must emotional blackmail them and whatnot just so they can. He has a target really? at the head office. So who needs who? Who needs who? Because like, for example, there are, okay, let me quickly break down the structure so you have a society society is like literally just one church one building yeah and then you'll have neighboring churches um then they'll come together group together they're called a circuit so it's mm -hmm. it's a couple of societies they make up a circuit and then you have a structure called um the district so now this is a collection of circuits mm -hmm. all right so you have circuits owing the Methodist Church millions. Mm. And the question is, are, are they even allowed to be debt collectors or some sort? How mm. are you accumulating debt in a church? So you have to reach those targets. The ministers have targets. And if you don't meet the targets, you don't get paid. But I guess this is a system that you guys chose. This is a church that you chose. So you can't no, no, go no, back no, and this say... this is the church my husband chose to minister. And you chose him. So <laughs> I in turn, chose you him. chose him and the church because you can't separate yourself from what he loves and what he chose. Yeah, but, but here's the other thing. They are so indoctrinated. They are like... It, it's so sad because they know what is happening to them is wrong. But it's like they can't even get themselves out of it. They can't even speak about it. And you're like, what are you? Like, I sometimes feel like oh, we're you in a cult. Oh, you mean the people that aren't really also happy with some of the yes. ways, and the, the methods, the yeah. rules, the... Yeah. Okay, so your mm. your husband is out of a job now, so he's mm -hmm. not working there anymore. He's not working. So, so it's the That's church that fired your husband mm. because of you? Yes, because of me. Okay. And Does they can never say, to? what is it I did? And yeah. where was the disciplinary for what I did? Because remember, if you're going to fire someone, you're at least going to say, okay, you did this. Um, I mean, there are internal processes. Say I so did there was no process. There was no processes that were followed. It was just like, boom. So he done. was unfairly dismissed. He was basically, if we were talking circular world terms, he was unfairly dismissed. Does he want to go back? He does. He's, they, I don't know whether they were hypnotized or whatever. You, you can never take a Methodist. I've seen ministers leave the Methodist church and they come crawling back. But he wants to go back so he can go back. He can go back and so I'm fighting for him to go back. Because okay. what they did was booting him out. Like the way they did things and they didn't want to speak to him. They didn't. And that's when I was like, you're going to talk to him. And I went crazy on social media. And they did eventually call him to a disciplinary where they actually told him, you did nothing wrong. It's your wife. So leave your wife. And you can come back to church. Was basically, that? That, uh, basically, that's what they want. To leave your wife and then you call yourself a church. So how was that um, conversation between you and your husband? Because yeah. he wants the job, he wants the family, but he's yes. like... Yeah, you, he has to choose, he has between, to his he has to choose between his family and, and, and the church. And I find that looking back now, I see why many ministers are alienated from their families because remember not all of us are indoctrinated his parents are not indoctrinated his sisters or whatever they're not indoctrinated they're gonna see right through the bs of the church 
and that's why they always they always isolated even with their own families their immediate families they don't have relations with those people because they kept away it's it's the way the system you know takes them away from people who are sober minded they're actually going to say my guy equally so they always i mean methodist ministers many of them are on second third wives it's normal from divorce mm. yes so they okay. always tell them because of your wife your wife is like this is like that and then you find a couple of months down the later they divorced which is why I did there's a video that is trending right now you know the trend say kelile yes <laughs> you know that one and you were like no it's not no it's not over because i know so, it's so like, was your husband not angry at you because this is something that he loves of course he is he was he was very mm. angry he was like i think at some point he his human after was like maybe i should really cut losses with this chick i was like my guy i'd rather be a, a a widow than a divorcee. Mm. So, you tired of me? Go home, take a break, whatever, but you're going to come back here. And me and these six kids, we're going to be here. <laughs> you, don't, you don't you don't get to, like imagine, imagine like I can imagine who it was a lot for him. Who would expect uh, you give me six kids and you like, okay, now I'm out because my bosses don't like you. Who shame? You stuck with me. You stuck with me. I'm not going to be a single mama. So but I'll be a single mom if you did yes. but if you're alive no yeah. not going to happen we're going to stay we're going to work it out you hate me now ah you're going to stay until you like me again <laughs> so did your we husband take until... some time off at least just to take all of this in because it is a lot he did he did i we, we agreed he went home he was with these people for four months you yeah. so you were you were left alone for four months with yeah. the kids yeah Sure, wow. And I think also you needed that time to also reflect on No. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Do you not regret anything? I regret like... nothing. I regret not doing more. I regret not doing more. There's this there's, there's so much um so he's back to the same wife basically. Yeah, but what he did for himself is yeah. he ditched his phone. So he doesn't have a phone. He doesn't have social media. He doesn't mm -hmm. have people calling him and like, "Ah, oh, you know, he's just off the radar." <laughs> Yeah, I think he's going through a lot as yeah, well. Yeah, he is. Yeah. He is. He really is. So would so, you I know that hmm? you don't like the Methodist Church, but no, would I you do. like for your husband to go no, back? Uh-uh. I love the Methodist Church. Okay. I grew oh. up in this church. Yes. Okay. Like, I I used to go to church with my grandmother. Mm -hmm. She wore the same uniform I now wear. My mom, like I was baptized in the Methodist Church. I love the Methodist Church. But one thing I'm not going to sit by and tolerate is you know followers being put into position of leadership and messing it up but are you they, uh -huh. do you think you can change who they are because for me if if you say you love it so much mm -hmm. why can't you just submit to what the system says do you understand because you can't change them so it's either you join them or you do your own thing but if you want to mm -hmm. join them Yeah, and you do. can't change them you have to do what they do so if they say you can't do this and you yeah. can't do this you you have to you know just follow those obligations and if you want your husband to be happy because what what is he going to do now he's fired he's at home he's without a job he has to go back to the church yeah. so are you remorseful do you want to say you're sorry do you want to start on a clean slate do you want to like say it. you know forget about everything i say take my husband back take my family delete back delete the post <laughs> delete the post and be a a a a a, a, a minister's a wife baba. yes oh my friend is so ambitious <laughs> <laughs> so very there's ambitious. no possibility of that no. happening here's the thing do you think um if if um black people never fought for their freedom and said you know what um apartheid government we submit because you know we're tired of the suffering um we do you think you and i would be sitting here speaking english <laughs> do you think if mom when it wasn't that one Medical. rotten potato do you think would be where we are today because let's face it that lady played a huge role in the struggle and mm -hmm. no she was not liked by many women and she was told why can't you just be a good wife do you think if those her and many other wives who were not good wives then do you think we'd be free 
No. So you are fighting a bigger battle? But it's you are bigger, alone fighting this big bigger, entity. Are you alone bigger, though? No, I'm not alone. Okay. I am not alone. Here's the thing. There's, there's a, you know, it breaks my heart when I think, actually, when I hear all the stories of other ministers who've been through the same thing or some sort of injustice under the system of the Methodist Church, I realize, my goodness, the Methodist Church has done nothing to me. Compared to what? Compared to what other families have been through. I'm talking about there are divorces that are in process now. Like last year, mm. I think that I know of, there's probably more. Last year, I know of three divorces. And by the end of the year, the husbands were getting married to the side chicks or within oh, the church. Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. So then there's a question of, am I really a bad person or do you just want my husband? And obviously, to be with him, you need to get me out of the picture. And you're not going anywhere. No, not with six kids. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. That's how you're still planning for more. Forget it. I still want more. Do you know that they actually, you know, when they started this nonsense, before they, they fired him, um, they cut down his salary because we had our fifth. Like, oh, so we keep, we're paying you so much, you keep popping babies. So let's cut your salary. Maybe you'll stop having children. So and that, that is a Christian. How are you maintaining six kids when, you know, the pastor's wife is obviously over. Yeah. And you both home now with the children. Like, how are you? But that's the thing. There are people who have been through the system, who's gone through this, and are like, we, we know what you're going through. God has sent the very same people who... Remember some pastors, child, oh, reverends, um, kids, yes. they're grown-ups now. They know exactly what we're going through right now. Sure. You so you understand? You get a lot and of people then coming to you, maybe privately, yes, DMs, there's, messages yes, there are a lot that of are people, relating to your story. They are relating to the story and like, you know what? I'll, I'll contribute towards the children's school fees or something. I will wow, do this. Okay. And that's how, and they're like, just keep fighting. Sure. So you so have the, the a mouthpiece fight, for the a lot is, of people yes, The fight is not about me and um, my family. It's actually a lot of... But does your husband want you to stop? My husband, he's he's got mixed emotions. You, you can understand. I mean, he's the one who's in the boiling water. Yes, mm. other people may be saying, no, keep going, keep fighting. But the reality is... He wants you to stop. He wants me to stop. And so for the sake him. of your husband, can't but you just stop? Here's the thing. I had decided, okay, you know what? I'm done. But the one, you know that the biggest struggle I had, the one thing I was fighting for deep down was you are not going to make me the face of injustice to him. So this mm. had nothing to do with no one or no institution. So actually, you actually it, also it, it, fighting it, it, that your husband is being unfairly treated. Yes, and you saying to him the reason he's being unfairly treated is because of me. Mm. So I'm like, no, tell mm. him mm. what he mm. did. Leave me out of it, you know, and uh, tell him. And they refuse to speak to him. He would send emails, can we meet, you know, and they just refuse to give him the time of the day. Please, so, can you give the minister... Time. <laughs> give him his job back. Give him his no, job they back. Did, they did give him time after after I I took them to the streets, and then they finally called him to in November last year. Mm -hmm. They called him to a disciplinary. They're so quiet, and that's just my but trigger. But it's me. positive. Something it's, it's, good it's is It's quiet. Coming. I don't know because. But here's the thing. So for me, the reason I wanted them to speak mm -hmm. to him is. Tell him what he did wrong. Why you fired him? He's the one who has a covenantal relationship with you. Mm -hmm. And they you, get you. you were the so, problem. Contractually. Yes. So contractually, it's between mm -hmm. the two of mm -hmm. you. So call so him. So they must go back Sit now. him and say, mm -hmm. we, we, we found you with your colleague in bed. Or call him and say, you impregnated so-and-so's wife. Call him and say, you... You know, he would obviously know what he did wrong. So it must be him. It not must be Nandi. him, not Nandi. Like, okay. I mean, he I could divorce you. me and he will move on. Like, they will do nothing to him. It will be business as usual. So talk to him. Mm -hmm. And so eventually they called him to a disciplinary, which is what I knew was going to happen. He has no, he has committed no crime or no sin against the church. So then like, you can, this, it's, like, I like, think it's a positive now, thing. For me now, it's like, okay, now that we've established that, mm. you told him that, thank you. What's next? They sent me an email that I should come through a disciplinary hearing. 
I told the lawyer, I don't have time for nonsense. <clears throat> Why are you calling me? Do we have a contract? I'm a congregant. Do you call every congregant that you're not happy with to a disciplinary hearing? I mean, just the other day, um, there was a video of a me? minister and a Methodist mm -hmm. in the Methodist church. They rough handling each other on the pulpit. Mm. You want to check it out? It's one of my latest yeah. posts. They at it, you yeah, know. It. It's happened before. It's not even the first time. We're not, we're not shooketh that they're fighting. It's happened before. Have you ever did what you are doing now? At such? No, they don't. Last year, there was a fight in uh, Central Methodist Church. I mean, it was all over social media. Congregants, you know, beating each other up and the ministers. Why me? And then that's when I realized, oh, actually, maybe God has sent me to be karma to the Methodist Church. So it's fine. Let's go. In closing. <laughs> um, what do you want to leave us with? And what do you want to say to the people who are watching? Um, because obviously this us having this conversation mm -hmm. in this episode, it's not about entertainment or about yeah. there's a bigger purpose. There, Absolutely. There's families involved, children involved, and, you know, real people, real emotions, real life experiences, mm -hmm. which you are going through right now, other people are going through, and so forth. It can go on and on. Mm -hmm. Even them with their side of the story, mm -hmm. they're also going through a real experience mm -hmm. with you or other ministers, you know. So just in closing, what do you want to... Mark leave us with and where where to from now so one thing i can tell you i've realized you know south africa is very corrupt as a country now i'm talking politically because how do you have so much noise around a corrupt system which is the church and do nothing so there's a lot of people who are going through injustices in different industries mm -hmm. you know i could i could list the industries and the people that have gone through stuff and that have come out and said, this is what's happening and nothing is being done. So for me, I, I think it's we have a pandemic, a corruption as a country and in whatever space you are, silence is not golden. Silence is the killer. Mm. It's so not golden mm. because um, there are ministers who have actually lost their lives because of silence. It's like, okay, it's happened before, let's go on. And they die and they are buried. You understand so stop keeping quiet. Silence is not golden. Whoever said silence was golden is <laughs> when I peep so much in this episode. I am like <laughs> Nandi. Um, so where to from here? What are you busy with? So, where can people follow what's you? What's coming up for you, Because darling. you know, you you also on TikTok and you're doing like mm. content. Where can we find you? So, um, well, most of you already know my social media handles. It's official Queen Nandi on all social media platforms or Queen Nandi. I'm probably next to Magashaga, I'm the second. Even when you Google, you Google, hey, really? oh, Magashaga will come and then there's Queen Nandi in the Methodist Church. I know, Ooh. it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, where to next? I've decided, you know what? Um, I like putting out information out there and, you know, having discussions that people don't want to have. Mm. And um, I'm starting a podcast. Well, it's a group collective. Yes. I've started, I've got this idea of doing a podcast called The Pastor's Wives Roundtable. So we're going to talk everything Christian. We're going to, like such things, yeah. we're going to have guests where, you know, come and say, we're breaking the silence, basically. That yeah. round table is to break the silence. Love yeah. It. yeah. But you do know not all pastor's wives are like you, right? No, they, they don't have to be like me. They're but very I conservative. Mean, like, not everybody will have controversy. That's why it's a round table. It's, it's, it will make it's, them yeah. take yeah. out I will, You know, the one, thing, a lot. the one thing God has gifted with me with is other people are actually free to when when I'm around. Yeah, yeah. they let their they guard down up. and they yeah. open up. Mm -hmm. and Mandy, I want to discuss that <laughs> yes. on that round table. And you know what? We've come to the end. Yes. And you know what? I really want to see this come 
to, to life, life. and yeah. execution because Nandi will... has a million <laughs> ideas. <laughs> ideas. Okay, that like every time we speak, she has a new, new idea. idea. Yeah. So can this one happen? No, let's be no, it, it will, great it ideas. Will, it will happen okay. because I'm, I'm trying... The reason I came here is because I'm trying to convince someone to be on, at that round table. <laughs> so... <laughs> I don't do drama for oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this edition of the podcast. And I know it's fresh, mm -hmm. something new, something different. Thank you for your truth. And thank you for speaking out and for being honest. I think Honestly, it's absolutely wow. amazing to have people who don't really hold back, but they're real. And that's very rare to find. And that's yeah. why sometimes it comes as a shock because people generally hide what's truly inside. So we appreciate yeah. you. Let's meet in the comment streets. Because, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to have a conversation in our... Because, wow. Nandi, Queen Nandi, you are just, like, amazing. You know, um, you know, we know you on a personal level. And I commend you for, for being the woman that you are. Yes. For being the voice that you are. Your honesty. honesty. Mm -hmm. Your love for your family. I um, mean, everything, I wish you nothing but the best. I cannot wait what you're going to be up to next. We will follow you on the socials. I'll follow you already. I know the people are very <laughs> curious to say, Yo! Dombo! <laughs> Le Dombo! Okay, guys, until next time, for myself, Innocent. And myself, Millicent. And Queen Nandi Child. Thank you so much, guys. Bye for now. Bye for now. And the rest of the amazing team! <laughs>